back to the channel. In today's video, we're starting the chair making series. This is one of my most ambitious projects today, and I'm really excited to get going, and I hope you enjoy this build series. In today's episode, we are visiting Chilton Timber. We're gonna be picking up some flexi ply, and we're gonna be making all the molds for this chair. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so we're on our way to Chilton Timber. They very kindly sponsored this uh, project by giving me some flexi ply. Now with this chair build there's a lot of bent lamination and some very tight curves and the only materials that can do that is flexi ply which is 1.5 mil or just you know standard veneer or constructional veneer. So I decided to go for a flexi ply core and then I'm going to veneer that with the constructional walnut veneer which is going to look really nice. So what we're going to do now is go to Chilton Timber, show you around, show you what they have. If none of you have been there, I highly recommend it, and pick up some flexi ply. So I decided to do a voiceover because there was a bit of noise and I wanted you to hear me. So as you can see, this is Chilton Timber. It is huge. They've actually just moved into this new unit and they've got a lot more space than the place they previously had. And they've got so much stuff. They've got everything from building materials to fine woodworking materials. They've even got carving and bowl blanks. They sell tons of different hardwoods from walnut, oak, wengi, ash, but for this project, I'm using a lot of sheet goods. And as you could see, they had a whole wall full of sheet goods and they pretty much have every sheet you'd ever want. I'm using flex ply for this project and MDF for the molds. But if you're not doing a lot of bed laminating, they have a lot of hardwoods to make solid wood furniture. There are two things I like about Chilton Timber. The first thing is the wide range of materials they have there, but also they've got a really well equipped workshop. So if you needed a particular molding or any profiling cut, they have spindle molders to do that for you. And they can also dimension and plane timber to any size you want, which is really helpful. They're a really nice bunch of guys there and I definitely recommend going. I'll add a link in the description down below to their website because they also do deliver. And if you haven't heard of Chilton Timber, now you know. All right, so we're back in the workshop and we picked up some lovely flexify. It's amazing how much this bends. You can make so many shapes with this and it'll be perfect for this chair. So what I'm gonna do now is get some MDF and make the mold for the seat and the back. Okay, so here are the two molds complete. As you can see, this mold is for the seat back. It's got a very nice curve to it. And this one is for the seat itself. Now these are pretty heavy. They're made from solid MDF, but they'll last a long time and I can reuse these molds. These molds can be used in the membrane press or a vacuum bag, but for this chair build, I'm gonna be using a membrane press. And the next chair I'll make with these molds, I'll use a vacuum bag to show you the difference. So that's two molds down. Now it's time to make the last mold, which is a little bit more complicated. That is for a compound curve, and that is for the rails of the chair.
and I've created this housing joint here so it's a bit stronger. These supports are attached to uh, this beam with a halving joint and I've added these plywood kind of triangle structures on the side to give it more strength because I'm going to be adding a lot of clamps to this and a lot of force is going to be applied when bending the plywood so I want this to be as rigid as possible. Okay, so that's the mould pretty much done. Okay, and that is the last mould complete. I know it looks very odd, but just to show you how it will work, the two key parts of the mould is this surface and this surface. The distance between here and the height of them are in the exact position where the rails are going to be mounting into the legs. And this surface here perfectly matches the bottom of the back mould. So when this bent lamination comes off the mould, I'll be able to glue this section onto the back and then it will join onto the legs as well. So I'm going to cut up lots of thin strips of flexi ply. I've just got one here just for the demonstration. So the way I'll form these components is I'll add lots of glue in between all these layers, clamp them on the bottom and then I'll twist the flexi ply into the right shape I want and clamp it up there. I wanted to do this method to show you that if you didn't have a vacuum bag, you still can do bent lamination. There are other ways you can do this, but this is the way I'm gonna do it for this project to show you it can be done with just, you know, two by fours and some clamps. Now I think the rails are gonna be eight layers thick. Now the more layers you add, the harder it is gonna be to bend in position. So what I think I'm gonna have to do is glue it up in stages first gluing up three layers together, then adding layers on each day or each couple of hours, depending on how fast it sets. But that will be clearer when we get to that stage. So I hope you're excited about this build. It's gonna be a really fun one. In the next part, I think we're gonna be doing some bent laminating. So I'll see you there. Thank you for watching this video. If you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. Make sure you check out Chilton Timber. I'll put their links in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in a couple of days for the next video.